I just wanted to remind you that you can use my code Urban Sims upon checkout when purchasing any Sims 4 content via the EA app or the Sims.com. By doing so, you're directly supporting me as a creator, and I can't thank you enough. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel for yet another chapter of Let's Play The Sims Pet Stories Midnight Masquerade. As promised, I am posting another episode on Fridays, which is our typical upload day for this series. I am so glad to be back on track and I'm so happy that a lot of you seem to be enjoying the return of the series. So anyways, as always, we always start off with Steven sleeping. Look at him, just all tucked in like a little bug in a rug. I love him. I was really hoping, though, that this night would give him a good night's sleep, right? He's been really low on energy, just really low on his needs in general. I am seriously contemplating on using our reward points to purchase, I might be saying this wrong, but the eclectic and enigmatic energizer. Does your sim need a little pick me up? The technology that powers this energizer is a puzzle wrapped in enigma, held together with copious amounts of duct tape and bits of twine and reported to be the ken of mortal sims. But all you need to know is that a quick visit to the Energizer will get your Sims motor running. Only five uses allowed for this addictive item. Negative side effects may occur if you use below gold aspiration. Consult your aspiration meter before use. Okay, I'm a little bummed that there's only five uses for this. I mean, you're spending 14,000 aspiration reward points. That's crazy, but I still think it might be worth it. Stephen Loyal is willing to do everything and anything to make sure that this Midnight Masquerade is a success, including zapping his brain for a little bit of energy. I mean, really, what is the worst that could possibly happen? He is in the gold right now in terms of his aspiration. So I'm going to try. OK, I'm going to try just to kind of hold off until we absolutely need to use this item. Now, I think there's like a pizza pizza, a pizza pizza, a pizza, a piece of pizza on here. And I'm not going to lie. This thing looks like it was put together in some sketchy backyard, like I said. In case of an emergency. So Steven is still sleeping and it looks like he's actually doing really well in terms of energy. But of course, Diva Zoomies are making him wake up. So we're going to have him rise and shine at the early hour of 740 in the morning. I'm going to have him come over here and get his life together. We're going to clean up the soup. We're going to clean up our little plate. We're going to come over. And we're going to make the bed. I'm probably going to have him restock the fish. I'm a little worried because last time we had them, they didn't last very long, but that was kind of my problem. So I'll make sure that this time we take care of them. Diva really enjoyed watching them swim around and she was actually really good about not eating them. So that's always a plus. All right, so we're just about done doing our chores. As you guys already saw, Steven is off today, which means, at least I think it could potentially mean, something big will happen in this episode, but I'm not sure. Okay, Diva is freaking out because there's a dirty newspaper by her toy, and look at her playing. Oh my god, she's so cute. Oh my god, she just went in for the kill. Good thing it wasn't real. Anyways, we're restocking our fish, and I wonder if we're going to get the same fish as last time. Probably. Oh wait. Oh my god. <gasps> wait a second. Oh no. Oh my god, they were in there the whole time. Wait, can we actually see a fish in his little net? Oh my freaking god, y'all. They were dead in the tank the entire time. I don't know why, but this is so sad to me. And ew, Steven. He really, really, really has been just neglecting life. Look at the freaking litter box. Like, is there even any litter in here anymore? It's just a pile of turds. All right, so we flushed the fish on the toilet. That's actually really sad, like super, super sad. Maybe I'm not ready to take care of any fish right now because we're barely taking care of Diva. But can I just give a moment of appreciation to The Sims 2? Because when you restock fish in The Sims 4, and again, I know people really don't like comparisons. Hold that thought. Chapter 7, Deal Me In. You need to increase Steven's cooking skill in order to create the next dish for the Midnight Masquerade. Okay, fine. I guess the toilet can wait. We do need to work on our cooking skill, so let's serve a little bit of breakfast. I'm going to have him make some omelets. I feel like that's all he makes every morning, every single freaking morning. Um, but like I was saying about comparisons, I like to compare The Sims 2 and The Sims 4 just to kind of point out the differences. And I find it really fascinating that in The Sims 4, when you restock fish, they literally just like kind of, you know, they just they poof, they go into, I don't know, the abyss. Right. But with The Sims 2, there's the action of actually sweeping the deceased fish out of the tank and flushing them down the toilet. And I don't know why that to me just 
I don't, it screams realism. And it's crazy that The Sims 2 has so much more of that than The Sims 4. But don't get me wrong. I am a huge Sims 4 girly. I love The Sims 4. But as I'm getting older, I think, and just kind of reflecting back, I really love The Sims 2. And it is its own masterpiece, especially for its time. Anyway, Steven's looking really good this morning. I don't know if it's like his plaid jammies or maybe his like facial hair, but he's actually quite a hunk. So I don't know how much more I got to do to get this cooking skill up, but I'm going to let him enjoy his breakfast. Sorry, Steven looks like she also went in for a little nap. Look at our little beautiful girl. Steven also needs to fill his fun meter because he's just been on the grind this entire time. He's forgot what it feels like to let loose a little bit. But again, we have something big coming up, so we need to make sure that our cooking skill is up to par. We're going to come over and make a dessert. Let's just do some baked Alaska. The gelatin and also the layered cake look really interesting, so maybe we'll just have a little cook-a-thon today. I know this is definitely not like the <laughs> action that I was hoping for, but hey, I think this might just do the trick in terms of getting our cooking skill exactly where it needs to be. Culinary skills abound. Steven earned a cooking skill, and with it, he has learned to prepare a new meal. Ugh, I can't believe that Splinter Gordon is trying to work his magic on both Aaron and Rachel. I'd give him a piece of my mind right now if I didn't have to get working on the lobster thermidor for Julianne. For some reason, I highly doubt that <laughs> Stephen would give him a piece of his mind. But yeah, I was kind of wondering that too. Wasn't he supposed to go with Rachel and now he's trying to cop Aaron? Like, what is it about Stephen? Like, he's clearly threatened by us for some reason. Anyways, our next goal is to prepare the lobster dish. The main course should be a hit at the masquerade if I can keep the cat hair out of it. That is actually really funny. I don't know why that made me laugh so hard. But look at her, look at her beautiful, beautiful cake. I forgot what it was called already, but I'm not gonna lie, this looks really good. I almost wish we could maybe bring this to the masquerade oh yeah it's the baked alaska <laughs> I don't know why I forgot. Like, I swear, I have like a 10 second Tom memory. Anyway, of course, he's going to go and try this. I don't want him to eat too much because he could have a stomach ache. And we just got over that bout of diarrhea that we got from the restaurant. Food poisoning is what it was, actually. So after he has a little snack, we're going to see if we can serve or no, just prepare the lobster. Cool. So it's not in any type of category that I have to worry about for a certain time frame. So it's around one o'clock. I would like to get this done as soon as possible i feel awful because uh, we've been so busy that we've been neglecting diva and obviously we've been neglecting steven too so right after i get this lobster done i am going to allow him to do something fun oh my god oh <gasps> look at how freaking beautiful this is in detail too this is crazy look at the way the lobster looks it's almost as if it was alive the spices the onion here even the inside and the i think cilantro this is beautiful. I never realized how absolutely gorgeous some of these recipes were. I only wish though we could put away the food because we have a bunch of stuff just sitting here on the counter. We got omelets, we got baked oh, 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 see, and this is what I was kind of worried about. Poor Steven. <laughs> His belly is so full. It's totally fine. We're going to resume cooking here. We're going to get this done. Stay away, Diva. Go play with your scratching post. Steven, I don't think you have to worry about anything because I'm pretty positive that is not how it's supposed to look. Oh, shit. Here comes Julianne. Hello, Steven. Do you have the lobster thermidor ready? Oh, hello, Julianne. Uh, yeah, here you go. Thank you, Steven. This looks great, girl. Why are you lying? I really hope that doesn't affect anything in the future because that was disgusting. All right, all right. I guess you've been good here. I should invite James over. It's been a while since we've hung out. I'm hoping that whatever we do with James will be a good time because we really do need to have a little bit of fun in our lives. So I'm pretty sure this is James Briggs. He lives on 56 newland avenue so let's invite him over i'm also gonna have um <laughs> stephen change out of his pajamas hey i mean we have lots of freaking food too so that would be great hopefully james is hungry how nice of you to invite me i'll gussy up and come right over let's just change into her every day um probably should 
I was gonna say change the freaking guest bathroom, but no, we should clean the guest bathroom. And if I'm not mistaken, James should be here literally any minute. I'm pretty sure he was eyeballing our contraption. Here I am thinking Aaron is perfect, then walks in this Rachel. What do you think, Diva? I gotta be honest with you, Steven. I'm definitely judging you a little. I mean, it's very evident the chemistry with you and Aaron is out of this freaking world. Not to mention, Diva really seems to like her. I feel like Rachel is just the type to kind of use and abuse you, and I feel like Steven definitely deserves a hell of a lot better. So let's have Steven finally sit down and watch some TV. Great, James is getting a view of his butt, or lack thereof, actually. Um, but it's fine, it is it is filling up everything that it needs to be filling up right now, and our next goal is to chat with James. So after we get a little fun in, I'm gonna come over and uh, I guess just talk with him a little bit. I don't know if we're, there's something specific we're supposed to do, but no, yeah, we're just supposed to chat with James. This place looks like a petting zoo. I'm taking care of Celeste's cat, remember? So is there any news on Gordon? Man, I can't deal with the animal sanctuary this place has become. Meet me at the flat hat bar and I'll fill you in on the details. I could use a few rounds of cards. The flat hat bar it is. All right, let's have a seat upstairs and get playing. But of course, before we do, as per tradition, I want to show you all what the flat hat bar looks like. Flat hat bar looks like because it's actually really cool looking. I really like the architecture of this building, even though, yes, of course, it's older. It definitely has like a lot of flair and character. Downstairs, we have a little area where we can sit. We can order some drinks. We can order a meal. I like that this kind of has like a multi-functioning purpose to it. And there's also a little bathroom area over here. It's very small. And then upstairs is where we can play some darts. Thankfully, there's additional bathrooms up here and even a jukebox if you want to listen to some music and of course our card table. So let's get over here and play some cards. For a second there, Steven was getting a little bit nervous that James stood him up, but it looks like he made it safely and oh, it's a hundred simoleons to play, that's crazy. So the news is that the police in Arbor Falls have determined the con man's last name starts with an S. That means Gordon Fetching can't be our guy. You know, he's going to the masquerade with Aaron, and I admit I'm pretty jealous. Then again, I can't believe how much fun I had with Rachel the other night. Help me out, James. What should I do? You should start by taking a look at who just walked in. I wonder if she would like to join us. Wait, what? Oh my god, is this Rachel? See, I was starting to forget how beautiful she was. This is such a vibe though. Hey boys, what are we playing? Some rummy, the rules are, I win. What were you saying, James? This girl never fails to surprise me. Okay, Miss Rachel, you're very quick with your hands. Dance with me, Steven. I wanna talk to you. Absolutely, you don't have to tell me twice. Okay, I have to admit it, I kind of didn't see it before, but Rachel definitely has like a very seductive aura about her, whereas Erin seems more friendly and a little more chill, I guess. I wonder what she has to tell us. I'm really curious. Maybe perhaps she's changed her mind and she actually wants to go to the masquerade with us. Rachel, you are some dancer. I need a minute in the ladies room. I'll be right back. Steve Steven's face is pretty much summing up exactly how I feel right now, but did anybody see that thought bubble with the big old money bag? I wonder if she just sees us as a walking ATM machine. And why are you laughing at me? Like, what the hell? I kind of want to talk to him a little bit and gossip about the situation because where the hell did she go and what is it that she's doing? I actually have, wait, hold on a second. Is this Gordon? Oh my freaking God. What if they're like scheming together? Why did he run up on me like that? And Steven, what the hell is going on? Anthony Zilch, Gordon Fetching? They look like freaking mobsters. I warned you about Rachel Steven. Is Gordon trying to pick a fight? I've had enough of this guy. If a fight is what he wants, then a fight is what he'll get. You know you've really pushed Mr. Loyal to the edge when he wants to fight you. This is crazy. Oh my gosh, I can't even believe it. He took him straight to the ground and oh, that was like the fastest fight I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Hey, aren't you a friend of Steven's? How about a knuckle sandwich? Oh my God, I hope James wins. He is a police officer after all. <laughs> Oh, damn, the party really died. At least James is able to kick Anthony's culo. 
Uh, guys, what is going on here? Girl, why do I feel like you are a part of this? We were just discussing some costume ideas for the masquerade. Speaking of, would you like to attend with me, Rachel? Uh, I'm sorry, Gordon, but I already agreed to be Steven's date for the masquerade. Sorry to hear that, Rachel, but we've always got our side project. Come on, Anthony, let's get out of here. Gordon makes a good business partner, but I find you more interesting. I hope you didn't mind that little stunt. I was planning to ask you to ask me to be your date. Mind? Not at all. I wouldn't get too excited, Stephen. Something about her seems really off. Good. See you around, Stephen. <laughs> okay, this girl has gotten him in a lot of trouble. Ugh, I don't know. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Rachel is really something. I have knuckles to ice and a cat to see back home, so I should get to them both. Before Stephen hails the taxi, I gotta give our good friend James a hug for having our back and always keeping it ten toes down. He is a real one in this world of fake ones, and I just, I don't know, he's so valuable to me. He's such a good friend. So let's have Stephen go home. He's not feeling the best. I was hoping maybe we could get a drink. Bye, Rachel. Ugh. But unfortunately, the only thing we can do is just juggle tumblers. So I'm not going to waste my time. I'm going to get Steven home. His energy is starting to deplete. He stinks from getting in that stupid freaking fight. And uh, I think, oh, James is going to grab something. That kind of sucks. Maybe I should grab something too? Nah, let's just go home. It is getting really late and we should spend a little bit of time with Diva before we turn in for the night. Honestly, y'all, that was wild. That was freaking crazy. I don't know, though. Everywhere we go, it feels like Rachel just... Oh, oh another one caught your eye, huh? Who, who is it this time, Steven? I swear he is a very lustful man. That or is he, he's extremely desperate to settle down. But, um, oh, Catherine. Catherine... Is this a cornier? Like, cornier or cormier? I can't tell. Either way, she's beautiful, so I totally get it. But, yeah, I don't know. I forgot what I was saying. Rachel, drama all the time? Ugh. Just not exactly what we need in our life. All right, where to? Home, obviously. I mean, it is way past our freaking bad time, that is for sure. A radio-controlled mouse? Lust must have ordered this for D.Va. Wait, there's radio-controlled mice? There's no way. You know D.Va is going to love it. Play with a radio-controlled cat attractor. I wonder if D.Va will stick. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> like, what would it stick to the stick to the radio-controlled cat attractor? Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> Sometimes the phrases and the way things are said definitely reflect on how old this game is because i'm telling you i don't even know what some of this verbiage even means anyway steven finally was able to catch up on some of the chores we have a couple other things that we need to do we do need to actually um fill up this bowl here he wants ever so freaking passionately to see the ghost of Gordon. And you know what? I mean, it wouldn't be the first time that we drowned a sim in a swimming pool because we had a vendetta against them. And hey, it might not be the last. Well, I wasn't going to play with the radio cat control, whatever the freaking heck, attractor. Um, but Diva hasn't had a lot of attention. And oh my God, this thing is he <laughs> huge. Let's give it a little, a little 360. Is she supposed to sit on this because this looks like a toy for a child this thing is ginormous all right let's play with diva and see how she reacts to this oh my god it looks kind of scary and also really sad at the exact same time all of a sudden things got weirder i ran into rachel at the flat hat bar and then gordon ran and does that snake asked rachel to be his date for the masquerade even though aaron is already going with him Rachel really showed him up by telling him she was going to be my date. I did pretty well for myself, I think. I mean, you did okay, minus the fact that you got your butt kicked. But other than that, yeah, I guess you did okay. So I'm not sure if Diva is liking this or it's more for Steven at this point because she seems like she could not care less. Like she is way too good to be duped by this stupid little mouse. I don't I don't think she likes it at all, actually. I mean, I'm having a lot of fun playing around with it, but she could care less. She'd rather stick to her little her little classic 
mouse here. So I'm gonna have him stop playing with this because Diva, like I said, she's looking at it, right? She's just not impressed. Like that toy is for peasants, and sir, I am not a peasant. <laughs> okay, I am Diva Loyal, the one and only. I really like the sound of that. Anyway, let's have Steven go and take a quick little shower. It is four o'clock. Thankfully, oh, look at her. She's actually playing with her toy. That is so cute. Um, thankfully, I don't think we have work tomorrow, so we'll be able to sleep in and, um, you know, get our beauty rest and things like that. But what I think I'm going to do is wrap up this episode here with Diva taking a dump in her freshly cleaned litter box. Anyways, y'all, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. I am so happy that I was able to bring you back to back chapters. And uh, yeah, I will see you all next Friday for chapter eight. And hopefully, hopefully we'll get just a little bit closer to the masquerade. I'm so excited to see what happens. Um, and uh, yeah, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And if you did, you know what to do. Don't forget to go ahead and comment, rate, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below where the sun does not shine. And I will see you all next time. Bye, guys. Under the palm trees in the California sun Sand underneath our feet The morning's just begun